Hello, and welcome to my first tutorial. Today, using Touch Designer, I'm going to show you how I make this prismatic visual. This is an audio reactive piece with a lot of flexibility for making it your own. So let's get started. First, import your audio by dragging and dropping the file into your project. Right click on the end of the audio file and find the audio device out chop. Click to add it so that now we can hear our audio. We'll average the two channels using a math chop because we only need one channel. In the math chop, find combine channels and change the drop down to average. Let's grab an audio analysis and plug our audio into it. Turn on mid and high and adjust the threshold, gain, and smoothing to fit your music best. You basically want to get it to where we're seeing some smooth but dynamic motion on all three parameters. Attach a select to the end of the audio analysis. Type low, mid, and high into the channel name parameters so that we can work with these three channels only. Right click on the end of the select and from the top tab, locate and click on chop to. Change the format to RGB and change image layout to row per channel set cropped, so now our low mids and highs are represented as one pixel, where the lows, mids, and highs correspond to the R, G, and B values. Next, I'm going to upscale this single pixel to a bigger resolution by plugging the CHOP2 into a fit, and I will scale it up significantly as well. Now I will transform it downwards by adding a transform top and setting translate Y to negative 0.9 Add a feedback top. Add a transform top and change the translate Y to 0.09. Add a composite top and change the blending mode to over. Select the feedback and drag the composite into the target top parameter. And finally plug our first transform into the composite. So we're getting a color trail kind of thing. I close it off with a null and name it color trail. This will be the basis for our instancing. In fact, let's set up our instancing network right now so we can get a better idea of what's going on. Start with a box op. Change the size to 0.7 and the scale to 0.001. Attach it to a geometry component. Turn instancing on. Let's attach our color trail null to another null called for instancing. Reselect the geometry and drag and drop the for instancing null onto the default op parameter of our geometry and change the translate XYZ parameters to R, G, and B. Add a render top and a camera. Let's add a constant material and drag it onto our geometry. And now we're finally ready to attach everything to an out and turn the display flag on. I add an RGB key before the out to make things easier to see. Something else I'll do is add a constant chop called global res and add two channels, W and H. These will be my pixel dimensions. For our purposes, I will use 1080 by 1080. I select my render top and I turn the viewer of my global res on so I can drag the W and H parameters onto the resolution parameters of the render and click chop reference. I will use this to control the resolution in several other places too later on. I change my pixel format of my render to 16-bit float RGBA. As you can see, we're getting something, but it doesn't look very interesting yet. So I'm going to go back to the color trail and incorporate some noise into it and give our visual more form. To do this, I'm actually going to start with some geometry like a tube sop. Change rows and columns to 1000, change orientation to z-axis, and change height to 10. Now I'm going to twist it by a lot, by 500. And add another twist, this time with the axis set to z-axis and the strength parameter set to 22. Close this off with a null. Right-click the out socket of this null and attach a chop to. The default parameters are fine. Now attach a top to, change to RGB and fit to square, combine sets. I plug this new top into a noise top. At this point, I set some initial parameters to the noise. But later on in this recording, I actually revisited this top and tweaked some of them even more. So here are the final parameters I settled on. 
a period of 0 0.12, 0 harmonics, an exponent of 0 0.46, an amplitude of 0 0.19, and an offset of 0 0.057, and monochrome switched off. I also go to the transform tab and on the translate C I type this expression, abstime.seconds. Add a null after this noise. Now back to our color trail. Before our for instancing null, let's add two composite tops, one named overlay and the other named glow. Attach the color trail as the first input of each of these comps, and then attach the noise null as the second input. Change the operation of each composite to overlay and glow, respectively. Now we add a cross top and attach both of these composites to our cross. Let's tone down the cross to about 0 0.4. And finally, we can plug this cross into our for instancing null. You can now see we're getting some semblance of a cubic shape. Let's adjust the camera. With my cam 1 selected, I navigate to the View tab and change the drop down to Orthographic. I am actually going to copy and paste this cam 1, so we now have two cameras. And I add a cam blend component. I attach each camera to the cam blend. I drag and drop the cam blend onto the camera parameter of the render top. I make the viewers active for both cameras and adjust their perspectives. I want one to be more of a straight on view and the other to be more angled and isometric. I spend some time here adjusting using both the parameter window and the viewers of the cameras. I make an LFO to control the cam blend. I make the frequency 0 0.025 and the offset 0 0.5 and amplitude 0 0.5. I turn the viewer on, reselect the cam blend, and drag the LFO's Chan 1 onto the weight 1 parameter. Copy this expression. In the weight 2 parameter, type 1 minus, and then paste the expression. So now a slow LFO is smoothly blending between two cam perspectives to keep things interesting. I also use an LFO to make the geometry rotate slowly. For this LFO, I make the frequency 0 0.11, the offset 69.8, the amplitude 20. I change the type to Gaussian and make the bias about negative 0.5. Now we're ready to begin our compositing, so I make lots of room between the render and the out. The first thing I do is add a level to bring down the overall opacity to about 0 0.13. And in fact, I am also going to go back to our constant material and bring down the opacity there to around 0.1. I go to the Common tab and enable Blending Transparency so I can see the effect. Now this part is a little tricky because there is no right or wrong way to do this. Basically, I want our final visual to take inspiration from prismatic effects in photography. So I am going to composite and transform our visual over itself several times, somewhat randomly. For example, I can add an overtop and a transform top and plug our level into each one. And in the transform top, I translate the x by 0 0.5, the y by 0 0.2, and the scale by negative 1 and negative 1. And I can reiterate this a few more times, transforming our top differently each time. So we can see we're getting duplicates of the cube over itself in different positions. Next, I will add a simple feedback network. I add a feedback top, a level top, and a composite top. I plug the initial top into that comp top and set the composite operation set to add. I adjust the level to about 0.75. I drag the comp onto the feedback. Next, I add a luma blur, and I add a ramp as its second input and change the ramp type to circular and tweak it a bit. The blur is weighted based on how white each part of the ramp is, I change the white filter size to 60, and then I add a bloom. I adjust this to taste. Next, I like to add light leaks to a lot of my visuals. So I drag and drop a stock video of a light leak into my project. I grab a composite top and plug my bloom into it, and I get a fit top to plug my light leak footage into. I use the global res chop from earlier, and I drag and drop the W and H parameters onto the resolution parameters in the fits common tab. I set the composite tops operation to add, and I plug it into our main connection here. That looks really intense, 
So we'll do a couple things here. I want the center of our visual to remain clear. So I'll mask the middle of the light leak out using a composite set to multiply. I insert a ramp. I copy and paste the resolution expressions from the fits resolution. I plug both the ramp and the fit into the composite. And I adjust the ramp to make the center black and the ends white. Now I add a level top. I don't want the light leak to appear always, so I'll use the highs from our audio analysis to control the opacity of this level. I add a select shop and drag and drop our other select shop from the audio analysis section. Type high into the parameter. I add a math chop after our new select and multiply the opacity by 1.1. I close this with a null named light leak control and I add a level top after the fit. I drag the light leak control onto the level's opacity as a chop reference. I add a filter before the math to smooth things out more too. And now our light leak's intensity correlates to our music's high frequencies making our visual more dynamic and selectively full. I add a lookup right after our RGB key. Connect a ramp to this lookup and adjust the colors based on your preference. That looks good. I also add an RGB delay. Okay, we're really close. I still want more variety and interaction with the music. So I go back to our network immediately after the render and level tops the one with all the overs and transforms. I will make our visual change its composition every now and then. Let's say, for example, I want this translate Y of this transform to switch between negative 0.1 and negative 0.9. So I'll set up a switch chop and use two constants set to those values. And I use it as a C chop reference for that transform parameter. Want the switch to be triggered by the audio. So I'm gonna take the low channel back from our audio analysis make a select and drag and drop the select from our audio analysis to its chops parameter. Type low in the channel name to select the low. Rename our new select low. And I'm gonna attach this to a math and multiply it by 10. Then I attach that to a trigger. I change the trigger threshold to about 1.4, attack to zero, sustain to zero. I attach the trigger to a logic chop and change channel pre-op to toggle. Close this logic off with a null, and I reselect our switch chop and drag and drop this logic onto the switch parameter. So now my transform will switch between these two values when the low frequencies exceed a certain threshold. I repeat this setup two more times on other transform properties, and for these, I use the mids and highs as their inputs, so not everything changes at the exact same time, and we get different combinations. Last thing, I go back to our noise top. After this noise, I insert a level top and bring down the brightness. This seems to make a big difference, causing the cubes to be more concentrated on just one corner. And there you go. There's a lot of room to experiment here to make it your own. For example, combining different blending modes of our two composites and adjusting the cross accordingly. When I don't need this visual to be real time, I'll finish a render, and I like to bring it into After Effects to get really detailed about editing the colors and the contrast, and I add a bit of a fancier looking blur, a more interesting glow, and finally some grain to help mitigate banding. But that said, I'm also pretty pleased with the real time result directly out of Touch Designer, and it can make a really cool audio reactive visual at a live performance, or for any other audio reactive purpose. If you learned something, feel free to follow me on Instagram and or tag me in something you made from this tutorial so that I can connect with more new media artists making interesting things. Thank you for watching.